no need for the full intro there. Didn't want to kill the mojo. If y'all watched my last video and commented what your first tune was, first of all, thank you. Uh, it was nice to see. It was nice to get an idea of what everybody's beginning tunes were. I thought that was kind of cool. A lot of you had this tune. A lot of you referenced this. And it was cool because it wasn't my first tune, but it was among the first. And it was the first tune that I ever played publicly. I was fortunate to go to a really nice private school. Shout out to Dr. Castle, my music teacher and choir director. He was the man. But as a result, I'm sure my folks spent all of their money on my tuition and did not have enough money to buy a video camera in 1997. So you're going to have to imagine this guy wearing khaki pants and a blue blazer. But when I first learned this song, I learned it in the key of G, because that's what the choir was singing it in. And it happened to work out because it was easy in the key of G. I've recently found two versions of this song, which I'll link down below. One was an accordion player whose name I've already forgotten. Sorry about that, I'll link him down below. It's awesome. And recently too, I found a version by a group called Emar. Not 100% sure I'm saying that right. I think so though. Both of which were an A. They're different, and my version's a bit of a hybrid of those. So listen to those. Check them out, they're, they're both just wicked. But let's break down the basic melody of this tune, and then I'll go show some of those ornaments that I've thrown in there too. Try that again, it's the first section. Second section here. One more time. Now this third section, we do have the G sharp. So keep that in mind. If it's not 100% accurate, you know, go back, check, make sure you get it pretty close. It's probably never gonna be 100% accurate. Just keep that in mind as well. So here we go, the third section of this tune. So we got two of them. We got the high G sharp and the low G sharp. I'll run that section again as well. If you have large fingers like I do, that can be a little bit tricky. That's why I said it's probably never going to be 100% accurate. And you're just trying to kind of just kiss the top of that G hole there. That's kind of the idea anyway. After all those G sharps, that section probably seems pretty simple. I'm going to run it again just in case. As far as ornaments go, on slower tunes, your best bet is to start simple. You can certainly add more in there as you get more comfortable with it and you start listening to it and, it, and if it sounds good to you, great. Um, but I would start nice and simple, small taps, some slides, things like that. So right off the bat in the beginning of the tune, couple of taps, couple of slides, sliding into the first beat, followed by a tap. When I change notes, that's something I use a lot, actually. That, that sort of mm, delayed cut, maybe we'll call it that. Rather than cutting the first note, which you could do, I just kind of like the sound of that, that slower, a little bit later cut. And then I'll slide again. I pretty much will always slide from a B to a C sharp if I get the opportunity. I don't play a ton of tunes in A, so that sort of transition doesn't really come up a lot, but it's one of those really cool things about the whistle. It's one of those little, little unique physics things about it. It's just a nice sound, I think. And then the same thing sliding back as I go from the C sharp to the B. You can either tap it, or it's 
quick or a slide. That whole sequence, there's four Bs. There's not really any rules to what you would put where. Somehow my brain has just locked in slide, tap, cut, tap. Again, no particular reason for that other than the fact that I just think it sounds good. Feel free to mix it up as you see fit. You could also tongue those notes. So there I did two tonguing and two slides. I kind of like the sound of the taps and the cuts in there. Now there I'll do that double cut uh, slide first, a slide from the E to the F sharp. So it's these two fingers to do a cut. Sliding again from the, the B to the C sharp. That's how I do that phrase. We have that G sharp in there, so my brain is usually focused on don't screw up the G sharp. So I don't try to pile on too much other stuff, but I will slide in the F sharp. Then once I'm free and clear of that G sharp, I'll do that same double cut thing I did. You could even tap if you were feeling adventurous, do a double cut and then a tap. Same thing coming down, making sure I get that G sharp as close to in tune as I can, and then sliding into the F sharp. Double cut, tap to the E. Same double cut there. Otherwise, you'll notice I'm really not doing a whole lot because um, I'm just trying to let the melody stand as much on its own as I possibly can. Now to finish, I did that same sort of delayed cut. Uh, rather than cutting into the B, kind of hit, hit cut that as you're coming out of the B, going from the B to the A. And again, tap and then a cut. No real reason for it other than I just think it sounds good. That's the gist of this tune. Uh, I was really glad to hear that it was such a popular one to, to get started on, because like I said, it was, it was an early one for me. I hope you like it in A. If you already play it, try it in a different key, because it's just kind of fun and I think it sounds really neat. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know down below, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Cheers, guys.